Hey, it's your friend Choice CJ here, and this is my week 7 battle for the MPL, going up against Deebs, aka Dubious. We did have a team builder that broke down this matchup, do recommend you guys go check that out. But in case you missed it, I am bringing a Subseed Superior, a Rocky Helmet, Spikes, Physically Defensive, Quillfish with Thunder Wave, a Bulky DD Zard with Thunder Punch, a Bulky Z Hypnosis, Tail Glow, Zerkatree, a Shookaberry, uh, bulky Metagross and a Metronome Greninja. Deebs has brought his Necrozma, Electro, Dragonite, Sneasel, Mawile, and Hippowdon. Most everything on here I think makes sense as a bring. The only thing I was a little surprised by was the Electrode, um, but Electrode is definitely uh, you know just annoying in general. And I only have the uh, the Don Pan to switch into it. And if he's a uh, you know an, an attack boosting item. Donphan doesn't necessarily take HP Ices that well from Electrode, so I can I can see where he was going with that. And of course it outspeeds like my entire team, which is extremely annoying for me to deal with. Uh, but Necrozma is a huge threat, um, I need to be able to uh, potentially Toxic that thing if it's a Calm Mind set, or just spam Night Slash with my Greninja, I am Metronome so that way um, he can't just Moonlight Stall me, I will eventually break him down. Uh, Hippo is something I've got my eye on this game. Basically, either my uh, Charizard or my Zerkatree can break through it and then pave the way for the other Mon to sweep. And then otherwise, I just want to make sure I don't lose to uh, something like Dragonite, um, SD Mawile, things like that. Mawile's looking a little bit difficult for me to break except for my Zard and it potentially subseed Serp. Subseed Serp actually probably is really good because that seems to be his main response to Serp. Um, not counting Dragonite. Like, Dragonite takes a Leaf Storm, then takes an HP Ice and dies. So, um, that doesn't really count as a switch. And so, yeah, it's really just Mawile. So, if I can get the Mawile in, go, go for Subseed, um, that'll put me in a really great position. So, uh, in terms of my lead matchup, I am just going to lead with Serp because I can basically uh, go for a sub on anything on his team. Including his likely rockers like Hippowdon and a potentially Necrozma and then start just setting up seeds um, If he wants to lead with Electrode like the only thing that really outspeeds me on the team Besides Sneasel, but Sneasel's kind of an odd lead um, If he wants to lead with Electrode, that's fine. I resist It's stab and you know, he can go for Volt Switch and get on out of there um, So it just kind of makes the, the most sense to me and you know It allows me to scout out his sets potentially as well if I just go for a sub and he wants to go for whatever move I can sort of figure out what they're Gonna be going for, or if their choice, what they're locking themselves into. So with that, let's go ahead and start this battle. Wish good luck, have fun to my good pal Deebs. And uh, yeah, we really need to come out ahead in this game because there's only four weeks left of the season. We are at three and three, and so is Deebs actually, and uh, so are a bunch of other coaches like Omega Jolteon and and some others. So it's a very important game for us. So the Crossman does come out here, and you know, seeing the lead set. You know, it could just be a rock setter. It makes sense, you know, he wants to prioritize rocks versus a team with a uh, Mega Charizard X. He does just go for Photon Geyser, though. So, you know, this is, uh, it doesn't suggest to me whether it's uh, physically offensive or specially offensive, of course. Um, but it is going to be able to break my sub pretty much no matter what. And so it doesn't seem like I'm going to be able to win this, this exchange here to start. Uh, predicting another Photon Geyser, I am just going to go into my Greninja. To try and absorb it. He goes for Heat Wave. So he expected my Metagross to come in, which was a pretty heads up play on his part. Um, I am just going to go straight for a Night Slash here, as he reveals to be the Culper Berry. So it makes sense, you know, that he can't, you know, if he's some sort of offensive set, he doesn't want to be revenged by uh, Greninja. And he does now reveal the Charge Beam, which means that he's probably some sort of setup set, potentially with Rock Polish. He misses, which definitely stinks. I don't know if he was timid or modest. Um, I don't I don't know what set he was based on my team. If he was timid, it actually didn't have a chance to kill me. It would have done 100, uh, 100 HP max. If he was modest, it was like a 60% roll in my favor. Um, unfortunate either way. Um, and then, so he does go for this charge beam here. So he gets a crit, so again, it kind of comes down to what nature he was in terms of how much that mattered. But, you know, I'll trade the, the miss with the charge beam for the crit there. It's six, uh, six one by half a dozen the other. So I go into my Zard, because it's basically the only thing that can tank a Photon Geyser from this thing. And um, I do just go for the Flare Blitz, as he smartly brings in his Hippo. I could have made an aggressive play there, I suppose, but I, I did not. 
And so we're gonna go for this Flare Blitz. You know, even a physically defensive Hippo, it's not like, you know, this thing doesn't actually like resist, it's just relying on its natural bulk to, to tank the hit. So it takes like 35%, is showing that it's almost fully physically defensive. We actually burn, which is really cheeky. Um, but the combination of Recoil plus Rocky Helmet from the Hippo is gonna put us at a pretty low range of health, which is unfortunate. And I'm going to go straight on into my superior as he goes for a Toxic. So this is a real heads up play on his part, just going straight for the Toxic. I suppose he could have tried to heal on this turn, um, which would be helpful since he's burned. Excuse me, it's like midnight as I'm recording this. Um, it would help him, you know, because he's burned, he's taking residual damage, and he is going to want to have this thing healthy for my potential DD Zard. But getting the Toxic off on my superior is really nice for him because... Uh, as I mentioned, you know, he's going to be taking a lot of uh, damage from my potential sub-seed set, but I've, my ability to just uh, spam my opponent is uh, greatly reduced now that I'm toxic. And of course, he does bring in his Mawile, as I explained in the in the start of the video. This was probably going to be his main check. And we do miss the, uh, the Leech Seed, which really stinks. Because potentially we could have played some games versus this thing for a little while. Um, you know, while well, the toxic damage wasn't too extreme. But now we can't even do that. We don't get any residual on the Mawile at all. So, kind of a weird hexy start to the game. Missing the Charge Beam, uh, getting crit by Charge Beam, burning with Flare Blitz, uh, missing the Leech Seed. It's like one thing after another. So it's it's a wild start. I gotta tell you, uh, Mawile comes in and uh, yeah, it does go for the Stealth Rock, which is very good for him. It's gonna be very annoying for my team. And um, I do just go for Spikes. Because that's kind of my my best play at this point, and I don't think he's going to be staying in with his Mawile. Um, he does go into Electro, which is a nice aggressive play on his part. I don't really have a great answer to Electro, but I suppose I could go into um, I suppose I could go into uh, Charizard, um, but I go into my my uh, Slender Man instead, and I get Toxic. So it makes me very glad I did not go into Charizard. Basically going into this, like if I if he went for Volt Switch on me, I'm going to resist it and uh, not take a ton of damage. And he likely goes into his Hippowdon, and I can hit that thing up with Grass Knot and do a pretty tremendous amount of damage. Um, and I am expecting his Switch out here, and I do go for the Z-Hypnosis, um, because I am expecting his Switch out. Instead he stays in, and he goes for Signal Beam. It does a nice chunk of damage to me. Him staying in there was a real smart play, because it punishes me for going for this setup move. Um... Basically, with the combination of the Signal Beam damage, my second term of Toxic racking up, uh, I'm going to be at a very low amount of health. And um, I have to make a choice here. Like, am I going to attack or am I going to go for a setup move? Uh, he does go into his Mawile. And I'm going to click Tail Glow just because I don't really have enough uh, damage output without the Tail Glow. And so it comes down to whether he has Sucker Punch or not. And I'll be, you know, and uh, if he doesn't, I should be able to get the kill on this thing. Uh, if he does, uh, he'll be able to knock me out, and he does have the Sucker Punch. Uh, I would have died to Toxic Damage that turn anyway. So at best, it would have been a one-for-one, one, but instead, he ends up just being able to take me out. Uh, so I go into my Charizard here, trying to scare this thing out. Um, and I figure if he switches out, I can just go for Roost and get my thing back up to a healthy amount of damage as he goes into his Hippo. And then I can pivot around. Um, but he, you know... Deeps is making all the heads up plays, man. Uh, it's it's wild. I'm really impressed with uh, with Deeps in this game, uh, making all sorts of great plays. The toxic on the superior switch in, um, going for uh, the photon geyser and rock polish and all that stuff in the early game, getting these play roughs. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, he gets punished for staying in, and he actually misses a um, he misses a play rough, which allows us to get up to a reasonable amount of health. Um, and we do just go for a Flare Blitz, and uh, Deeps once again makes a smart play, uh, preserving his Mawile. Um, you know, he I, if he was risking, you know, willing to continue to click Play Rough, I was hoping he would be willing to do it one more time, and I click Flare Blitz and knock that thing out. But he sacks, smartly sacks the, the Hippo instead. So if I do get an opportunity later with this Zard, I can potentially sweep, uh, unless he's like Scarf Sneasel or something odd like that. Um, I switch out of my Zard and I go into my Metagross, which is sort of my my counter to Dragonite as he goes for a Dragon Dance. Uh, so in retrospect, it might have been a good idea to break this thing's multi-scale um, because I am going to go for an Ice Punch after he goes for Earthquake. You know, with my Shookaberry, it's not going to do a ton of damage, but it's going to put me in range of where I cannot live to. 
Um, so that breaking the place things multi scale is definitely a bummer. Um, but you know, I was still thinking that Zard was kind of my best win condition at this point um, because my Zerkatry is dead, my Subserp is toxic. Um, all I have left is uh, is uh, Quillfish in the back. Um, so I felt like I needed, in order to have any chance to win, I needed to hang on to Zard. Um, but as a result, my my um, my Metagross is going to go down. I bring in my Quillfish here, thinking that I can survive the Z move, uh, but I make the Calc incorrectly. Um, I forget that Intimidate gets applied, um, and so you don't need to take that into account uh, when they're when they have setup moves. So like it says a plus one Dragon Knight, I go into the Calc and I put in my Quillfish, and it already applies the Intimidate. I don't need to correct for it on the boosts. Um, so anyway, uh, we do have a, a small chance to live, I think, based on rolls, um, but maybe it's not true after rocks. I don't particularly remember, uh, but Quillfish is going to drop. Um, so even though I did make the calc wrong, it's not like I had a better play, right? Um, like I pretty much had to, um, I, I, if I went into Serp here, it was going to die to the Z fly. Um, I guess I could have sacked the Serp and then gone into Quillfish. Quillfish maybe could live the Earthquake. Um, rather than uh, dying to the Z-Fly. I'm not sure. Yeah, I guess uh, Earthquake is weaker than Z-Fly. Um, but uh, we are able to survive the Ice Punch somehow with our Serp and take it out with an HP Ice. So we have two Mons left. He has four. He has lost his Necrozma and his Dragonite. And he's got the Sneasel in here that outspeeds both of my Mons. And he's just going to go for knockoff. And uh, even if he's not like a Life Orb, I, uh, you know, Life Orb set, uh, knockoff should be strong enough to take out my Zard for the range of HP that it's at because you see it's at like 45% and we are going to take rocks damage so that's putting us right at around uh, right at around 20% or so. So the Sneasel is going to knock off our Charizard. It's going to go down and we are going to suffer a 2-0 loss to, or sorry, a 4-0 loss to Debs. Uh, so was it the best game that I've ever played? Uh, Probably not. Uh, do I think Deebs like really played his ass off to get this W? Uh, yeah, actually, um, he was. He played heads up all game, making the right plays with the Mawile and the Hippowdon, getting the setup with the Dragonite versus my Charizard. You know, at that point, he didn't know if I had a Dragon move or not. Um, I could have bopped him with a big Dragon Claw, or I could have gone for my own Dragon Dance. Um, and then, you know, boosted along with him, but, you know, he made the right play in that situation, and it was awesome. Uh, he applied pressure immediately, uh, in the early game with his Necrozma. The Electrode applied a lot of pressure, like, just top to bottom. I'm actually really impressed by Deebs. Uh, I know he had a tough season last season in MPL, uh, but dude, he's killing it. Um, and I'm, like, really scared to face him in GBAD League now, so, uh, Deebs, if you're watching, big shoutouts to you. You really impressed me this week. Uh, I'm, I doubt that you could say the same for me. <laughs> uh, I didn't really uh, play my best, but uh, even if I had, I'm not sure it would have been enough to take you out this week. So, uh, good game. We are going to drop to 3-4 and four on the season, and we are going to be going into Week 8 where we face off against the Uzi Gunner, a good pal of mine, fellow GBA analyst. Um, he did a really great job with the Trainer Card series, and uh, he just has good, good commentary. Uh, and he's pretty funny, <laughs> honestly. Uh, so make sure you check him out uh, this time next week. We are going to be having our battle versus him. So you can catch his side after you catch our side. And yeah, so hopefully we can turn our luck around. I think we kind of have to uh, run the table for the rest of the season and have a shot at making playoffs. There's probably going to be one team that's 5-5 five and five that makes it, but our differential is not uh, amazing. Like we're, We have a minus 2 differential, which is not bad. Um, but it's not the top differential amongst all the teams that are sort of in the range here of being bubble teams. And so I think the team with the best differential is going to end up being uh, the one that comes out on top. So maybe that's us. Maybe it's not. Um, we'll have to see. Um, but yeah, if we don't run the table, uh, we potentially are going to miss playoffs. So that would be a big bummer. Uh, but let's hope it doesn't happen. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure you check out the channel for other giving Pokemon content. And until the next time, I will see you guys later.